Hello everyone, welcome to another Grimgar video. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys fun facts about Grimgar that you may not know about. Before I begin, I should probably let you guys know that I have a cold, so if I sound a little weird, that's why. I'm also using a whole new editing software, so if my videos are coming out a little later than usual, that's also why, because I'm getting used to it. My last software um, isn't working anymore because of some driver issue with my graphics card. I guess my editing software, Sony Vegas 14, is too old for my new drivers. I don't know. It's a long story. But I currently have a new editing software. It is technically better, but I just got to learn it, which is going to take a little while. But if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, share, tell me in the comments what other ideas for videos you guys want me to try out, and let's get to it. First off, when you get sent to Grimguard, did you know that the group of people you get sent there with, the size of that group is going to be completely random? And we also still do not know if all the humans that get sent to Grimguard are all from the same world. So for all you know, the humans that you get sent there with could be from different worlds, and the size of people that you get sent there with as well can go anywhere from three people to sometimes ten, or in some cases like Haru's entire group was about twelve people. This next part is not entirely confirmed, but it is heavily implied through the narrative that your personality heavily affects how good you are in your class. Haru, for example, is a super introvert and actively hates being the center of attention. This leads to him accidentally going into stealth constantly while he's walking around towns full of people. When he goes into stealth, he's just much harder to detect. So a skill that is usually activated to Haru is more passive because of his personality and his introverted nature. Meanwhile, characters like Yume are shown to have the opposite effect. Her dunce and airhead nature actually makes it harder for her to land arrows, and she's just not well fitted for her class. However, they also show that Yume can overcome this after years of practice. Let's talk about the character's financial, um, stability in Grimgar. Early on, the characters have a lot of hard time actually managing to save money because just how little money they make and the stuff to pay for stuff like food, cleaning their clothes, and upgrading their weapons and armor. Eventually, the characters get into a really good rhythm and they start actually making a lot of money and they start making enough money where they can actually put stuff away to save up, except for Ranta, who's so irresponsible with his money that at one point, the characters got a gold payout for a mission which was doing the deadhead keep mission essentially they get paid 50 silver up front and then 50 silver after the mission is done all of that together is one whole gold ronta was given 50 silver a day before the mission actually started and he apparently used up all of that silver in less than a day we as the audience have no idea where this money went but we do know that 50 silver is a lot of money in the Grimberger universe. And Haru and the rest of his party are actually completely baffled in where Ranta may have put his money. What makes this even funnier is that Ranta and Moguzu actually talked about opening up a business together. And Ranta was supposed to manage their money. And, um... Yeah, I don't, need, I don't think I need to tell you guys why that's a horrible idea. Looking for Moguzu, he's never gonna have to actually worry about that. Did you know that Ranta was originally supposed to be a paladin or a warrior? But he heard about how cool the Dread Knights are, and he immediately jumped on the Dread Knight bandwagon and didn't even pay attention to the fine print. Which means he cannot switch jobs, or the Dread Knights will hunt him down and kill him. He also cannot have relations with any women. Which is ironic, because that is specifically why Ranta wants to be a volunteer soldier to begin with. To look cool to women, so they can actually want to um, date him and sleep with him. <laughs> Good luck, bud. In the Grimgar anime, they actually give the more characterization to a lot of the characters and give them more hobbies. For example, Yume is shown to enjoy rock climbing, which actually makes a lot of sense for Yume, to be honest. Ranta, on his off time, likes to go fishing, which is... Is that out of character? I feel like that's out of character. Mary enjoys sipping tea and looking at sunsets, like, all the time. Moguzu is a cook, and he also enjoys carving. All these hobbies are specifically just for the anime, and I don't think many of them actually show up in the light novel. Instead, you have Ranta enjoying a lot of alcohol all the time and talking about wanting to go to the brothel, but he never actually goes to the brothel ever. He just tries to get Haru to go with him because he's too much of a chicken to do it himself. Which again, I ask, where the fuck is all your money go if you're not actually going to the brothel? That is it for this week's video. Sorry if this video is late, by the way. I'm still not 100% sure when this video is getting out. But I wanted to see if I can edit this on my new editing software. And also, just see if I can do anything new. Also, fun fact for light novel reviews. I'm going to actually start doing the SEO alternative light novel, which so far I've actually kind of been enjoying. It's literally the only version of SEO that I actually like, aside from, like, SEO Bridge. And if anybody else has any suggestions for other light novel reviews, let me know in the comments. And a special thank you to all our subscribers over on our Twitch. If you want a shout out at the end of our videos, click the thanks feature here on YouTube or subscribe to our Twitch. Thank you for watching this far and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.